Good evening, Cardinal fans. Welcome to La Peep and our annual coaches showcase. Right off the top, we want to thank uh, Dave and the crew. <laughs> okay, Dave and the crew here at La Peep. Dave is, if he's not out here, let's give him a hand. What we're going to do. What we're going to end up doing here, we're going to just, in just a couple of minutes, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking, which is great news. We'll just do table by table. Left, left or right, Rich? Oh, you're, you're not going to laugh today, what I know about you. I, I was the last person to know. Sorry, Dick. Um, a lot of stuff to talk about. We have coming up uh, next week, we have cruising with the Cardinals out on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Weather going to be just like this if you need tickets. We have those for you. A lot of stuff going on. The Rolly Williams Golf Tournament com coming up on the 14th. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. A lot of stuff. We have uh, President uh, Rick Wario. There he is. Go ahead and stand up so folks can recognize you. <laughs> Teresa, his wife. And a Booster Club Board uh, President Rich, uh, Rich Dussel. Where are you, Rich? There you are. And do you have any more of those raffle tickets? Were you giving those? Did everybody get one of those, the little red ones? We only have winning tickets left. Only winning tickets left, okay. Roger Stewart, Vice President. There's Roger. Secretary Rand Haight. Frank Garlington, where are you, Frank? Over here. There he is. Well, Frank's been a booster for a long time. Robert Cliff. There he is. Jeanette Davidson, and last but certainly not least, Patty Stewart. So welcome, we're going to have some, uh, the coaches coming up in just a couple of minutes. What a year that it was for the Cardinals. Major titles, I think three sports with uh, Crown and WAC titles. Men's golf, men's basketball, and softball, which just was, what, three months ago? It just seems like it was yesterday. But we'll talk about that all coming up. Men's basketball table, you are first in line, and we will be rolling. Coaches Showcase, go ahead. All right, we're going to get uh, started with our program once again. We'll be drawing some raffles here in just a couple of minutes, have some stuff for you here. Also, don't forget, we have the cruise a week from tonight out on Lake Coeur d'Alene. We have tickets for that if you'd stop by and pick those up. And a week from Friday, Rolly Williams Golf Tournament at 1 o'clock next Friday out at Avondale. We have sign-up sheets for that. $75 per person, $300 per team, $100 whole sponsor, and a great dinner by the Texas Roadhouse. If you've played out there before, you know how good it is. All right, let's get started with our coaches showcase. First up, men's soccer. That's Ken Thompson. All right, well, uh, just got distracted. I saw a familiar face here. Um, so when we were lying here, uh, Carrie told me I was actually going to be doing a keynote uh, address here, which sounds harder. And, and uh, I said, well, what do you think of Russian literature? And he said, OK. Um, the only one I can think of is, is Anna Karenina, where she throws herself in front of the train. Um, so I'll talk about that later. Um, but we're off to an own 4 start. Um, <clears throat> That said, you know, you look at the problems we're having on the field, and, and a lot of it stems from the smoke and being inside a lot. Uh, when you play a game on a, on a field 70 by 110, and your training space for half the year so far is 20 by 20, you know, you get, your shape gets, you know, gets distracted front to back and right to left, and, you know, people stand in lines instead of being staggered across the field. Um, you know, I'm sure in basketball you wouldn't want to play five straight across the court, right? So we're having some of those problems, but we're starting to sort those out. And uh, last weekend we were in uh, Tacoma and we were at Peninsula, so those non-league games took, took on some of the toughest of the conference early. Um, and the week before that, you know, honestly it was, it was pretty ugly. Um, so that first game over in, in Tequila at the Starfire Complex, which is, you know, a huge uh, youth complex, used to be where the Sounders played their uh, non-league games. Um, you know, they'd play... Mex teams would come in from Mexico or Japan or South Korea or wherever, and that's where they'd play those games. Uh, so it's a fantastic facility. And, you know, the friendlies, they have 50 teams there. They've got 24 men's teams and 26 women's teams. And uh, the first 30 minutes, we just can't even get out of our defensive third. 
and uh, you know it's it's kind of uh, it's not really the way you want to start. And uh, so every time I stand up uh, to start to try to yell at the guys, uh, as it turns out, our field was closest to the train tracks. Um, so every time I stood up to yell, a train would go by, and no one could hear me, and I, I don't really have a voice that carries anyway. Um, but if I'm going to talk about what I like about this team, uh, we're, we have a really skill, skillful group. Um, we're pretty athletic, and then I, I think we have a really blue-collar attitude. We're, we've got a lot of hard-working, hard-tackling guys. Um, and speaking of those trains going by, I put Raj in at one point. Raj is one of our Central Valley guys, a really, really spirited player. And he was on the far side of the field in the corner. And uh, every time those trains would go by, he would yell, and I could hear him from the far, si far side of the field. Um, so, I, you know, in addition to having some skill and, and some good work rate, uh, I think we're also a team with some personality. Um, so I've got a few introductions I'm going to make. First, I'm going to uh, thank the ASNIC students for coming. Uh, we've got Scott, who's our vice president, and Savannah and Paul are representatives for ASNIC. And then this year, we've, we've got a new assistant coach. Uh, this year, we've, we've still got Casey LaFoon, who's at work this evening, but Tanner Jones has joined our coaching staff as goalkeeper coach. Tanner actually rejoins us from uh, playing in 12 and 13 and finishing an exercise science degree at U of I. We're very happy to have him and his uh, expertise and, and personality involved. And then I've got two guys that are going to speak for maybe 30 to 60 seconds. I've got Zach Bowski here from East Valley High School. And we've got Josh Greer, a sophomore from Billings, Montana. Hello. Uh, well, I'm Josh Greer. I'm captain of the men's soccer team this year, and I'm from Billings, Montana. And Coeur d'Alene is a lot prettier than that place, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's right by the lake. Um, that's great for the three weeks of warm weather we get here as students. So. But, um, so our first league game is coming up Friday, so you guys should all come out. We're going to play hard, and we're going to win for you guys. <laughs> Hi, I'm Zach. I'm from Spokane, Washington. I had the choice to either go play at the Falls or North Idaho, and I think just the reputation of the school was the difference maker. Like every sports program has been successful, and as far as my time here, I've really enjoyed it. The campus is really nice. Everybody's been really nice to me. Um, and the 0-4 start is kind of rough, but as Coach said, I think the group looks actually really good this year, and we're pulling some stuff together, so I'm really excited. All right, we have Chris Carlson with women's basketball. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's nice to be back and looking forward to a new season here at NIC. Um, we've got a lot of new faces this year. Uh, we're very excited about that. We had six kids go on from last year's 19-win season playoff team. So we're really excited to, uh, to get a new group going. Um, uh, one of the things, um, one of the changes that we have in new faces here is, is our assistant coach is Karina Baker, who played for us on the 2011 National Championship team and uh, did a tremendous job. It's great to have her uh, around on the court in the office and helping out. And uh, I'll let Karina say a couple words. Well, hi, everybody. Um, I'm just really excited about this year. We have a really good group of girls. And um, fun fact, when I was a freshman, we had 11 on the team. And now my first year here, we have 11. So I don't know if we can maybe keep it going or not, but I'm really excited and I love being back. So let's go Cardinals. Yeah. And then this is going to be one of our speakers right here is going to be Zoe Crocia from Alaska. Crocia? Krupa. Krupa. <coughs> Still figuring it out. Sorry, guys. Uh, hi, I'm Zoe. And um, this is my second year at NAC. And I'm excited for this te uh, upcoming season. It will be awesome. And everyone's getting along so far. So 
hopefully everything goes great. Hi guys, I'm Heidi Selman. I come from Wilmer, Minnesota, which is probably a town none of you guys know of, but that's okay. And, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a transfer sophomore. I went to another community college last year, and I'm really like living here. I used to live here, actually. I was born here, so it's kind of like coming back home. And um, yeah, I'm really excited, really loving the team. I think we're really well-rounded, and I'm excited what we have to bring this season. Heidi played at a junior college uh, last season in Minnesota, averaged 15 points and 12 rebounds per game. So we're excited to get that type of input with our team. Uh, Zoe started most of the season for us last year and was a key contributor, hit some big threes for us in key games. So we're really excited to have Zoe back. Um, another addition we have this year is a local from Lake City High School, Kiara Simpson. Uh, Kiara played three years for us in our summer club team. And uh, Kiara was recruited Division I level. She's an outstanding player, and she's going to have a great year for us this year and be a very strong player in our league. Our league is, is very tough. Uh, <clears throat> men's and women's side, the last two years, uh, both sides, men and women, have won the NWAC championship. Uh, just to give you an idea how tough the league is in the basketball section. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us, but uh, we've got a really good young group, a lot of speed, okay, a lot of quick players, um, good, strong inside players. I, I think we're going to be right there uh, making a push for the playoffs. I think Spokane, Wenatchee have quite a few players back this year, uh, but that doesn't always mean everything. But uh, you'd have to give them the front-running nod uh, to start out. But uh, I like our group, and I'm looking forward to uh, this upcoming season. So thank you. All right, well, it's going to be interesting to watch uh, Karina Baker on the sidelines as opposed to when she was playing on the court. No, no tease, Karina, at least till the second game. Dan Hogan, women's soccer. Well, welcome, and it's a beautiful evening. Uh, nice, put, nice to be out on the patio and not inside some place. Um, women's soccer. Oh, Kelsey did come up. Okay. So, my, my assistant coach Kelsey Parsons going like, "Don't make me go up there." <laughs> Maybe we should make her talk now too. No. Okay. Um, so I just want to say a few words. Um, first off, Ken, I'm sorry, but our record's a little better than you. We have two ties and two losses. So, not not a lot better, just a little better. And, and, and our claim to fame is that we finally scored this last weekend. So before that, Ken had us beat with the men's team because they had at least scored goals in their games. We hadn't. So, uh, but we, we've been on the same kind of trip as he has last weekend. We were uh, played Tacoma. Um, the Tacoma game was actually really exciting. Uh, we we uh, decided to go down a goal about 15 minutes into the first half. And then we scored about five minutes later to tie it up. And it was 1-1 at half. And then halfway through the second half, Tacoma scored. And instead of you know, helping out the poor old coach, to, so I, I didn't feel more gray hair coming in, um, they decided to wait till one minute into stoppage time for any you know, soccer. It means the extra time after regulation is done um, before we scored with like 30 seconds left in the game before we tied it up. So uh, you know, I, my, my heart's going because you know, we hadn't done too well wins-wise. So. Uh, it was good to get a tie, and that game felt like a win. Um, and then we played Peninsula, and the thing about Peninsula right now is that when we played them preseason before, uh, I think our closest game in preseason four before was 4 nothing, and that's in the 15 years that I've been the head coach. And so we came out of that with a 2-1 loss um, and played really well. Um, it, it was actually, you know, their, their goals came off of scrambles in, in front of the net, um, and our goal came off a of free kick, so none of them were, were spectacular plays built up or anything like that, um, and it shows that we're improving. Um, the other thing about that is both Spokane and Walla Walla have also played Peninsula now, so we can kind of look each, how each other is done. Uh, Walla Walla did beat them one nothing, um, but if you watch the game on film, uh, Peninsula did everything but 
put the ball in the net. I think they had like 24 shots to Walla Walla's five, and Walla Walla came up with a one nothing win in that game. Um, and then Peninsula beat Spokane 2-0 and beat us 2-1. So the three of us will likely be battling for the, the top three spots in, in the East Region again this year. Um, our plan is to come out on top so we don't have to travel the first weekend. So uh, I've invited a couple of my players, my captains, Ellery Ferris and Ashley Camacho, um, and they're going to say just a couple words, and, uh, and then we'll get out of your hair. I'm Ellery. I'm from Ellensburg, and it's really great to be back here out on the water and with this great weather. So we did have a little bit of a rocky start, but we have twice as many freshmen as we do sophomores. So we're, we've had a lot of learning and bonding, and we've got a great group, and I think we're going to go really far. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Sorry, I giggle when I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, I'm Ashley. I am from Las Vegas, Nevada, and this is my second year here. The weather is actually really nice, but it's really cold in the winter, and I suffer, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, we're definitely going to have like a solid season this year. We have a lot of talent on the team, and I'm very excited for it. <laughs> That's the most words you're ever going to get out of Kelsey. Thanks a lot. All right, volleyball. Kelsey Stanley. Come on, Tim. Come on. Um, hello, everyone. I uh, I uh, introduced my assistant, Robin Reese, but she had to get out of here. Her daughter has her first home volleyball game at Lake City, so she got out of here so she can watch that. Um, I'm going to introduce the sophomores right away. I know we were supposed to bring a couple girls, but, oh, Chelsea had to leave, huh? Um, I brought all four sophomores because right now we don't have a captain picked, and I couldn't decide on two. Kayla Newman, she was a conference MVP last year, and I'm actually expecting the same thing hopefully this year. No pressure. Uh, Haley Etter, if you remember, she was our um, stud middle. You actually are going to see her more on the pin on the outside this year, playing that role for us. Uh, she's definitely a versatile player, so she is able to play on the pin, in the middle, and even on the right. Um, she's a fun one to uh, have some, do some plays with. And then Templeton is our returning setter, and um, she's definitely stepped up big times the last month um, stepping up as far as a leader and um, we were um, running 6-2 and now we're back to a 5-1 with Templeton so she's doing a good job. Uh, as far as the freshmen, we have uh, eight freshmen this year so we are very young um, but we don't feel very young when we play. Our girls are outstanding when we compete at practice. Um, I couldn't tell you a day that the um, backup side, which I don't even call it backup side because given day, that could be the starting side because they beat our starting uh, lineup all the time. So they're doing really well. Um, a few girls that will stand out this year, Chloe Knutson, it might sound familiar. She's out of Lake City. She's um, just a little stud, well, I guess. <laughs> Rob and I are really little compared to this team this year, but she will, um, she'll be playing a lot of right side setting, um, even back row for us, but she's a good little athlete to have. Um, also Hannah McFedridge, a really interesting story with Hannah. She is from Maple Valley, Washington, and she got cut her sen senior year on her high school team. Um, volleyball coach, I guess, didn't like her, and she's an outstanding kid. We love her. She's super athletic, and she's doing a great job for us in the middle. Um, Sydney Bybee, which may sound familiar as well, she's a Coeur d'Alene High School girl, and um, I call her go-go gadget arms because just when you think she can't get any higher blocking, she has another two inches. Uh, she's 6'2", and she plays huge. Uh, you'll see her in the middle as well. And last but not least, of course, I always have to give a shout out to our liberos because I was one. But our libero, um, actually, um, Hope De Leon, she came uh, from Caldwell, Idaho. She called me a week before practice started and told me that uh, she just got mono. 
So she's going to be out four weeks. And so, of course, um, it was a long wait, but we're happy to have her back because it's a, that ball con control she brings that we definitely need this year. Um, I'm super excited about this team. I know we're two and four, and a lot of people are like, ooh, rough start, which, yes, it is a rough start. But um, we have all the potential to be the best that we can be, and I keep reminding the girls and myself to have patience and trust the system and keep working hard every single day, and hopefully at the end we're the best that we can possibly be. Um, I will stop there and I'll let the girls talk. I'm Kayla I'm from Sandpoint, and I'm a returner. Um, I just want to say we have a lot of personalities on the court this year, and I felt like uh, we lacked in leaders last year, but we definitely aren't lacking that this year. So I would definitely stop by a game because it's going to be fun. I'm Haley Etter. I'm from Spokane, Washington. I'm also a returner. Um, this year, Spokane is looking pretty tough, but we do not like to lose to them, so that should be a pretty fun game if we can make it out. Um, also, Walla Walla is always a big competitor. Um, they took away our winning streak last year, so we're definitely looking for revenge there. But I think we're going to go into every game with the same mindset, treat everyone as if they were Spokane or Walla Walla, so that we can be ready for the tournament at the end of the year. <laughs> we play this weekend in Spokane. It's uh, the Spokane tournament. And so we're going to see a lot of teams that we played uh, two weeks ago in the crossover. We actually have two teams that beat us in our bracket um, first round. And so I'm excited to see where we've, um, how hard we've been working the past two weeks, where it goes. And then our first home game, we kick off next Tuesday against Walla Walla here at NIC. So. Please come out and support us. It'd be great. All right, wrestling, Pat Whitcomb. Bartender, TJ. Um, yeah, so wrestling wise, this is my 22nd year. Um, looking forward to uh, a couple of uh, milestones. Hopefully, uh, in the program, uh, we're five wins away from our 700th win, which would be a big deal um, for us, and we're chasing our 15th national title. I want to give a shout out to, to Dan's dad, Les, who started um, all of this by winning those first two national titles back in the uh, 1974 75, which not only weren't you born, your parents weren't born either, probably by then. Um, uh, the, I'm going to introduce my staff, and then they're going to talk about the guys, and, and we'll have them talk. Um, hopefully, Bryce has a little bit more to say than his sister did up here. Um, first of all, Kerry Stanley. Um, Kerry was a two-time national finalist, for us, national champ. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he's uh, been here for a while, so I, I kind of turn everything over to him and Brandon. Brandon, um, a local product here from Lakeland, but went on and, uh, there we go, we got one person from Lakeland, um, uh, there we go, <laughs> and uh, he wrestled uh, for four years at the University of Wyoming, so I'm going to turn it over to them because you've heard me talk plenty in the last 22 years. All right, uh, I'd like to thank all the boosters um, for putting this on, um, it's a great event, all the parents, wives, husbands that made it out. Thankfully, my wife let me come and didn't make me watch the kids. Um, <clears throat> I'll talk about our first two up here. Uh, two kids that had to come a long ways, um, even though one's from Coeur d'Alene and one's from Lewiston. Uh, each of them picked a different college route. Um, Bryce went to Oregon State. Dylan went to Haver. Um, everyone doesn't see why Dylan left Haver to come back to Coeur d'Alene. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, there are two of our, our big recruits this year. Um, Bryce took a year off. Took a lot of convincing, I think, to come back. Um, and it was all on his own accord. So it's great to have a Lewiston kid getting back into it. Um, we expect big things out of him. Um, and Dylan took a year off also last year. Um, and I would see him every day in the rec center lifting and ask him, hey, do you miss it yet? No, no, not yet. <clears throat> I, I don't know if I wore him down or Bryce talked him into coming back. Um, but it was two good signees early on in the year. Um, so we got big things out of these guys. They'll be in 141, 149, maybe 157 early in the year. Um, but great local kids, um, great students, and expect big things out of them. And I will turn it over to Brandon, our other assistant. 
All right. So uh, last but not least is Hassan Hawthorne uh, coming to us from Alabama. He's a third-year guy, and, you know, one awesome thing about uh, everyone up here right now is, you know, we've got great leadership coming in. So all, all these guys, you don't have to worry about any of these ones in the classroom, uh, and, and they, they're so focused and disciplined, so that's why they're here today. Uh, we hope we get a lot of you guys out. Again, we're chasing our 700th win, and uh, I'm expecting big things out of each of these guys and uh, big things as a team. You know, we get, we get, we're fortunate enough to have each one of these guys uh, they take care of business every day, and uh, can't wait to see them take care of business all throughout the season. So I'll hand it over. Hi, everyone. Uh, Bryce Parson, like Kerry said. Um, you know, it was a big decision of leaving Oregon State. Um, kind of lost the love for the sport. Took a full year off, just kind of worked. Um, made a little bit of money here and there when I could. Um, Kerry was always on my phone asking me if I missed it yet, like he said. and. You know, and I never thought I was going to step back on a wrestling mat. I, uh, I actually accepted a job offer in Florida to roof some houses, and it just so happened that Carrie called 30 seconds later and said, hey, man, this is probably the last time I'm going to offer you a scholarship, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I said, man, Coeur d'Alene sounds good compared to Florida. So, you know, uh, here I am, and I'm more than thankful to the entire coaching staff for giving me another shot my last year. So um, thank you, Boosters. Thank you, everybody, for coming out, and uh, hope that – really show up this year and win another title. So here's the... Uh, Dylan Lockwood. I'm from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, like he said. Went to um, Montana State University Northern up in Haver, Montana. Not a great place. <laughs> I did not have a lot of fun. So like they said, I took a year off. Um, I'll just talk loud. Um, I took a year off. Didn't really, didn't think I wanted to do it anymore. Um, I was kind of back and forth actually there for a while, and then I actually I got a call from Bryce and he's like, "Hey man, I just signed." And my best friend growing up, and I was like, "All right, I'm in." I, I called Carrie, Carrie right after that, and I was like, "Hey man, what do I got to do?" And he's like, "Come down to my office, we can figure it out." I was like, you "Got a deal." Locked down. It's the best decision so far. All right, so I'm Hassan Hawthorne. Um, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Um, the reason I came out here from Alabama was because uh, I saw Pat at Nationals, and uh, there were people that. Yeah, he uh, he showed my parents that. He's like, you want one of these from North Idaho? I was like, that's kind of a big ring, and I want a ring. So, <laughs> so I came to North Idaho, but uh, the coaching staff is great. We've got great teammates, and it should be a good year. All right, how about some cheer? Cassie Muttley, head of the cheerleading department. Where are you? There she is. Cassie? <coughs> Hello? Okay, good, it's working. Hi everybody, I'm Cassie Motley, I'm the cheerleading coach. Um, I am so excited for this year. Um, we have the most returners that we have had in years. I have seven returners, seven returners. Um, and we have three guys, ladies, or sorry, guys, gentlemen, and ladies, we have 12. That's not the right numbers. Three, 16, 16 ladies. <laughs> Um, I did not major in math. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, it's really exciting. Also, our skill level is so much higher than we were last year at this point in the year. So knowing that we have the entire season ahead of us is so exciting for me. Um, last year, we kind of focused on really difficult skills because I didn't think that we were going to have enough skill to be our competitors that we were gonna be too low of skill. So we pushed and pushed and pushed for really difficult skills, um, but we were sloppy compared to the other teams. So this year, um, my goal, before I even knew the team we had, was going to be play it a little bit safe and make sure that we are clean. 
and then I got granted this team that is full of skill. Like, we could clean up what we have right now and kick some serious butts. So, <laughs> um, knowing that we have the whole year ahead of us to gain a little bit more skill and then refine everything um, is really, really exciting. Um, and then the team is excited because they know it also. Um, and I will introduce my two returners and one freshman. This is Maddie, and she is one of my returners. She is um, special because she was one of my girls that showed up to our fall tryouts and was like, I've never done cheerleading before, and I think I'll try it at college level. <laughs> that is my least favorite thing in the whole world because I certainly would not try out for any of your sports because I've never played them, and I'm not going to try at a college level. So... I don't put on my advertisements that you have to have experience, but I always want to. And she showed up with no experience and did an amazing job and learned extremely fast and is one of my favorite athletes so far. So she's ruined all my stats. I can't say that I don't want those people to come in with no experience because here she is. Um, and then Alex, likewise. Boys are a little different. They um, pick things up a little bit different than girls. So. It's easier to train them when they come in fresh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he's the same. He came in last year with no experience. He just thought he would give cheerleading a try and is one of the best athletes. And then Lexi is our freshman that I brought with us. And she comes from the world of cheer, but a different side of cheerleading. There's cheerleaders that cheer for sports. And then there's all-star cheerleading where they just practice and compete and that is their sport. They don't cheer on other sports. Um, I've done both. She's done all-star. So this is her first year cheering for a school? Yep. Yeah, so first year cheering for a school as an actual cheerleader. Um, so be excited to see how she likes that. And here's Maddie. Hi, I'm Madison McDonald. I'm from a small little town in Southern Idaho called Weezer. Not a lot of people know where it is, so I just say Boise. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's tiny. Yeah, it's like the last red light before anywhere, like Lewiston, up this way. It's about an eight hour drive. Um, but I had always been athletic in high school and I had always wanted to do cheer, but it was way, way too expensive for my dad to commit to that in high school. And so I was walking to the sub one day coming uh, from the dorms here at NIC and I saw this thing and it was like, cheerleading tryouts, we offer scholarships. I'm like, why not? The worst they can do is say no. And they didn't. By some, I don't know, force of nature, they were like, all right, let's try it out. And so it worked out. And I went to nationals with them. And it has honestly been one of the best years of my life. And I would not change anything. Hello. Um, I'm Lexi. I'm from Spokane, and like the coach said, um, I did competitive cheer, which is different, so I'm excited to try it, something new, cheering for a school, and then competing at the end of the year, too, but um, I'm excited for this year, um, I guess because, uh, like, when I met the team, everybody was so positive and friendly, and right away, I made a lot of new friends, so... That was exciting. <laughs> uh, first of all, does anybody know Jerome, Idaho? Yes. yes. Okay, so then you know it's like a 10 hour drive from here. Yeah. Well, uh, like Cassie said, I, last year was my first year, and uh, my story is I talked to her at the three on three last year, mainly because I was waiting for a hamburger. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, she said Disneyland. That immediately brought a flash where I was like, wow, I can go to Disneyland. And then I just thought, okay, let's go. <laughs> Luckily she said yes, and now I'm here. I'll be cheering for them. And I build planes. All right, we continue on, and now the women and men's golf coach. The men, all they're going for this year is a three-peat, and the women have been perennial champions the last couple of years as well. Coach of the year, 
Three Pete. I kind of like the sound of that. Russell Grove. Um, uh, so the uh, four people I brought up here today are all sophomores from last year's team. So I have Mackenzie Robbins, Caitlin Fisher, Jesse Henderson, and Braxton Stewart. Um, all of them, well, those two were part of the uh, championship team last year, and uh, the women actually took third last year at conference. Um, this year I brought in eight freshmen, uh, including the five returning sophomore guys. Um, one of the only local guys that you might know is Tanner Byers. If you know, if you play golf at all, you probably know Heath Byers from around here, so his son. Um, on the women's side, I brought in um, five freshmen, and the two local ones are Madeline Neff um, from Rathrum and Hannah Larson from Post Falls. Um, right now, we're just kind of practicing, getting ready for our first event. Actually, we were just up at Rock Creek. Um, that's why we're a little late coming in here. Um, but um, gearing up, so our first event is September 29th and 30th, uh, and that's over at Gold Mountain in uh, the Seattle area. Um, and then we have a string of about four events uh, after that. So, um, so yeah, we're just kind of gearing up uh, for that. Um, what else should I say here? Uh, am I good? Okay. Um, so I guess I'll just let them talk about um, kind of what last year was like and the expectations uh, as players uh, going forward for this year. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Robbins from Boise. Um, last year coming in was kind of scary, honestly, but like the girls were really welcoming and I know me and Kate have been trying to do that same with the girls that have come this year and I'm just excited to see what the girls will bring to the course. Hi, I'm Caitlin Fisher. I'm from Gilmer, Texas. I, um... Like I said, I'm returning. I am extremely excited to kind of see what the girls have to bring to the table. Last year, for me, the season was a bit of a struggle. And I don't even mean just the season. The whole year was a struggle. So I'm excited to kind of see what, after all the hard work over the summer, what I can bring to the table as well as what we can do for it as a team. All right, so I'm Jesse Henderson. I'm from Farmington, Utah. And I'm a sophomore. So I had actually had an opportunity to play for a school back home uh, called Westminster in Salt Lake City. And uh, I essentially decided to come back here. So I'm excited to see what, what all of our freshmen can do. We got eight of them. Some of them are, have really good potential, a lot of talent. So I'm, I'm hoping we can three feet. I'm Braxton Stewart. I'm from uh, Montpelier, Idaho. And yeah, last year was super successful. I'm really glad that we got to have a good experience with those sophomores. Those guys were super fun to be around, and we really got to look up to them. And uh, I don't think, not only do we expect to win pretty much every tournament we show up to, but almost every other team, when they see us roll up to tournaments, they, they kind of know who we are and what we do and pretty much every week, but sounds a little cocky, sorry. <laughs> I'm not. But yeah, um, we're really lucky to have a coach that gives Russell and he really shows us the, the ropes on you know how to go low on courses week in, week out, and we're looking to do it a 3 peat again this year. We saved the three championship teams for last men's golf. The second, men's basketball, Corey Simmons. All right, just want to, come on, fellas. Don't be shy. First off, just want to say thanks to Dave and LaPete Pierre uh, for putting this on. He does a great job. We do a lot of... Uh, stuff here and he, he does a great job with this so um, thank him and his staff and then thank thank you boosters for all you do um, the success of this athletic program is, is based solely off the boosters and the support we get from you guys so we really appreciate it um, I got one little thing for you any golfers in the room okay if I got the best way to get really good lessons for free no you play with Russell and you play so bad that he finally says dude you need to come to the range with me. I got to give you a couple tips. Um, so that's what happened with us this summer. I played with him, and he's like, "Corey, you you need to you need to come to the range a couple times because we need to get something fixed, a few things." So, 
Um, it's fun playing with Russ. He always brags about his team, but I don't know if you've ever played or seen him. He's probably the best golfer in the Northwest at his level, so it's pretty, pretty awesome to watch him. Um, thank you for all your support. We had a great year last year. A um, couple introductions. You guys hear me talk a lot every other week, so I'm going to let these guys speak a little bit more, and they're excited. Um, but a couple introductions. Al, Al keeps talking about out in the sport. I'm thinking football might be the sport, so I've developed a football coaching staff this year. Um, so you all know George Swanson, our full-time assistant. Come on, stand up so you can see everybody. Okay. <laughs> TJ said he is standing up. Um, so George is back there. He does a lot of work for us. He had a great job. He's been with us, uh, been with me since since I've been here. So um, Russ Giles um, was with us last year. <laughs> Colby Colby Denton was with us last year. And then we added a couple. We're fortunate to add a couple new ones. Uh, Josh Whitaker, who was a Coeur d'Alene High School coach at Coeur d'Alene High School. Um, He's got a son. He's got a son that's, that plays at the high school, so he's going to be kind of helping us whenever he's not chasing his son around. And then a, a big addition to our staff, Zach Camel. <laughs> Zach played. Zach played basketball at the University of Montana, and then after he was finished playing in Montana, he stayed on staff there as a grad assistant, a student grad assistant there. Um, and they're really good friends of ours, so they called us up and said, "Hey, we got a great guy that wants to help." I said, "All right, send him over." So uh, Zach's been a great addition. A um, couple of. Uh, couple things just to, to throw out there. You know, we've had a great year last year, a lot of success. Um, if you're into Sporting News Magazine, if you read like to read magazines in the next next month's edition of Sporting News Magazine, make sure you go pick it up. I got an email last week that we'll be ranked in the top 15 in the country um, out of Sporting News Magazine. Not just the NWAC, but in the, in the nation. So it's a really, we're really excited for that. Um, they've, also, they've also named uh, Raekwon Evans our player of the year. Last year they named him as a top five sophomore in the country. And we have, a, we have a freshman that's committed to University of Washington, Nate Pryor, who they've named as a top five freshman in the country. So we have a top five sophomore and a top five freshman. So exciting. A couple local recruits just to throw out their names that you can keep an eye on. Um, we signed James Carlson, Chris and Carrie's uh, son. You've seen him. He's lived in, the, lived in our gym. Um, started out about that big, and now he's about that big. And we're really excited for James. Um, he had a great, great career at Lake City, and we're really excited for him. And he's going to be a big part of our program. And we also signed Emmett, Emmett Taylor the third out of Lapway. He was the 1A player of the year out of Lapway down there. So we're excited about our group. Um, but I'll let these guys introduce themselves to you and, and give you a little speech. Thanks, Corey. <laughs> All right, my name is Ian McLaughlin. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Uh, I'm a sophomore here. Um, one thing I'm really excited about this year is just the team chemistry we have. Um, I think it, it's been led by the sophomores just welcoming the freshmen and just making it comfortable for them to be who they are. And I think it's easier to play with people that you enjoy being around. So. I feel like you took my speech. <laughs> um, I'm Keegan Crosby. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Um, last year I feel like something that we struggled with was team chemistry, um, whereas this year I feel like we're all meshing well together. And um, it's going to be exciting to see what we can accomplish this year. So, yeah. My name is Drew Sheridan. This is like my third or fourth year. I kind of lost track, to be honest. <laughs> but um, one thing that I'm really excited about this year is like they, these guys talk about is the chemistry. You know, I feel like this year we have really something special. We got the talent. So I feel like we could do something really special with this year. My name is Raekwon Evans, and I'm excited for this year because we have a lot of high-character guys, a lot of the young guys, too. So hopefully we can bring back uh, another championship. Yeah, so this is a great group of guys. These guys all really helped us uh, win a championship. Drew redshirted for us last year because of a knee injury. Uh, but you'll gar I can guarantee you at any level you won't find a harder worker than him. And then the other three guys really put in a lot of effort to help us win that championship, our, our first championship in men's basketball. So it was a lot of fun. And then on a side note, Ian, we need to pull out the uniforms that Al used to wear at NIC. Remember the, the short shorts and the tight jerseys? Those are back in now. Those are back in. I don't know how, but Ian's trying to bring the short shorts back. Um, so we need to, we're going to have a retro day and wear those in one of our games. So make sure you don't miss that. Thank, thank you again for all your support. Have Al bottle? I still have mine, Corey. <laughs>
Al still has his, but he can't get into the darn things. All right, our third championship team and coach of the year. What a year it was. Softball, Don Don Williams. Well, I'd like to thank all the boosters for coming out and all your support um, this past year. And um, I'd like to introduce my coaching staff. So we have a new assistant coach this year, Jordan McCracken. Stand up, Jordan. Jordan's a Lake City graduate and uh, went on and played at Utah State. So we're glad that she came home and is joining our staff. Am I on? Uh, we also have Dan Silvis here. Dan is a volunteer coach for us and comes in and throws BP to the girls. And, and it's great having Dan. So thanks for sharing them, Cassie, with us, because we, we love having them. We can have them. <laughs> well, for us, we have, uh, we have eight returners from our championship team coming back, and we have um, 10 freshmen on our uh, team this year. Uh, two of the players that will be coming up here to speak in a minute, we have Maddie Mott returning, and she was player of the year for the NWAC and had an awesome season. Um, I had to write down some of her stats because I can't remember them all. But uh, she had 29 wins. 2.07 ERA, 208 strikeouts, and a 432 batting average. So not bad. <laughs> Ashlyn Lynch she'll be coming up here in a minute. She was a first-team all-conference. She also hit 432. I don't know how you guys had the same batting average. Uh, with 70 hits, 73 RBIs, and she was the NWAC leader with home runs with 20. So she had a great season for us. So. Maddie's our only returning uh, pitcher. She has a young staff um, under her wings right now, and so we have two local pitchers in the circle. We have Betty Comack from uh, uh, Coeur d'Alene High School and Mackenzie Wilson from Lake City High School. So uh, looking for those local kids to do well. We also have Grace Ferez from Portland, Oregon, and Andrea Huey from Vancouver, Washington. So a lot of young pitchers, and uh, Jordan has her work cut out for her, and, and we're looking for a couple of those kids uh, to help Maddie. So we'll see what happens uh, throughout fall ball. Um, newcomers to watch, Sarah Williams. Uh, she's a big athletic kid from Boise, Idaho. Um, I'm looking for her to come in and contribute um, right away. Grace Shimatsu from Boise as well is a quick little lefty slapper. Um, I think she'll be doing well for us this year. And then Brianna Hecker. I don't know if this is working. Brianna Hecker from U-High. Got another U-High kid coming in. We love our U-High kids. Um, she just is a power hitting lefty, and so I think she's going to have a, a great year for us as well. Um, we only have three home dates for the fall. We'd love to have you come out and watch us. We're at Finucane Field out in Hayden, so I know it's a little bit of a drive that out on Prairie Avenue. Um, this Saturday we have our annual alumni game at 1 p.m., so come out and, and, and cheer on the Cardinals. I guarantee a Cardinal's going to win um, on Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, September 22nd, we play, and October 6th, we play games at 1 and 3 p.m. at Finucane. So those are our only home dates. Um, the other two main dates that we have is we get to go up uh, September 29th and play the University of Montana. And those of you that know me, my daughter plays for Montana, so that's going to be a really fun day for us. Um, Maddie, you might have to give her a, a cookie to hit. No? And then we're going to be heading down to Central Washington University, um, to play uh, Central, uh, or down to Ellensburg to play Central Washington University on October 16th. And so that'll wrap up our fall schedule. So at this time, I'd like to have the girls come up and uh, share a little bit about the championship season and how they're feeling. This is Ashlyn Wynn. Like she said, I'm Ashlyn Wynn. I'm from Pocatello, Idaho. And uh, coming to North Idaho has been like the best experience of my life. I've never met a group of girls that like love the game so much. Like coming from high school, you got the girls that love it, and then you got the girls who are just there to play, you know. So everybody here bought into the program and wanted to win something. And fall was okay, but I think once we went to Florida in the spring in February, um, that was the point where we were like, all right, we're doing this, you know. So we started grinding from then on and uh, got to the championship. I mean. If anyone knew, we had a really good record last year. We were 50 and three. So that was really cool, actually. <laughs> it makes for a fun season. But uh, got to the NWAC championship. And we're like, all right, this is our year. We're going to win it, you know. 
going through, we're winning games, we're playing well and get to the championship game and to uh, win that game and get the adrenaline rush and to know that, wow, all our hard work this year, you know, it's been put to good use like we won. So um, I hope that we can get our freshmen to buy in this year. I mean, we've only had a couple practices so far, but they're looking really good. So I'm hoping to get another championship this year. I'm Maddie. I'm from Portland, Oregon. I'm a returning sophomore pitcher. Um, like Ash said, our highlight of our season was definitely our NMAC championship. Um, just huddling in the pitcher circle after throwing that last pitch and Megan Carver getting that last out for us was awesome. Um, and then our biggest challenge this year is going to be welcoming all our freshmen and teaching them all our fundamentals and having them revamp their game to uh, compete at our level. Um, and then, like Don Don said, we've only got a couple home games this year, but technically we're not home. Uh, we haven't had our field in three years, but hopefully we'll get our memorial field up and running this year. So, fingers crossed. Thank you. So, is, is there an official move-in date to the field? Uh, we're working on the, probably late March. Late March? Late March, early April. All right. So it's only taken you 22 years, Don Don, to get a new stadium. <laughs> you win a championship, get a stadium. I like it. And basketball won a championship, and then we get a gym. I'm liking how this is going. All right, Al, do you need to come up? Here? Oh, wait, 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 stop. I just want to see if he'd stop. <laughs> Quinn Marinaro, where are we? There he is. You get, you get to come up here, because Randy Boswell is on assignment. So I'm just, I'm just embarrassing the heck out of you by just not telling you that you were going to come up. But on behalf of the athletic department, you're going to come up here and talk about the uh, training staff. Another outstanding one. By the way, elevated to a paid assistant, so he's, he's making some money. All right, uh, it's been a long talk of quite a few people. Hopefully uh, I don't put anyone to sleep and make the short sweep, but uh, yeah, I'm Quinn Mariano. Um, this is my fifth year on staff as an athletic trainer. Um, so between Randy, if you know Randy Boswell, who's been working at NIC for 25 years, uh, he's my boss. He was my old mentor, still is a mentor. I was a student at NIC uh, 10 years ago, uh, and I decided to come back. So. And I see is a special place for me. Uh, Coeur d'Alene is a special place. It's home, even though I went through that whole kind of phase of like, I need to get out of here because I grew up here. Um, and I just kind of over time uh, with trips and vacations, I always look forward to coming back. So, um, but yeah, so about the athletic training room, it's really busy. It's an adjustment phase for me. This is kind of the first stint of mine uh, taking over for six weeks. Randy's uh, son-in-law got uh, deployed to Afghanistan, and so uh, Randy's going to, or he's, he arrived, he's in Florida as of yesterday to help take care of his grandchild and daughter during that adjustment phase. So trying to keep the walls up and the roof from catching on fire and keep people alive, and it's been fun so far. We have a, a student staff as well of uh, really hardworking uh, students. Um, they're not here. I didn't know we would be represented, but uh, they work really hard and they have a, um, they uh, seem to have a passion for taking care of people and they like to be in the athletic training room. Uh, two of them, I want to say, were past athletes. Um, I want to wait for that speedboat to go by. I just feel lucky that the mic is not cut off yet, so that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, two of, we have three student athletic trainers this year that help, help me out so much because uh, 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 I t help take care of all the athletes, all the programs. All the athletes come to me whenever they want to and I got to try and put a Band-Aid on them or maybe some saran wrap around their mouth so they stop complaining. But, uh, um, but yeah, we get by. So two of the athletes, like I was saying, or two of my uh, interns are previous athletes. Um, and so, yeah, they had a good experience as uh, athletes, and now they kind of want to be involved still and uh, kind of spread that kind of good environment and good vibes and helping out uh, the athletics department uh, in the athletic training uh, uh, program. So, yeah, we're excited about this year. We're going to try and keep our athletes 
polished and healthy on the court field uh, so they can keep uh, performing at the high level that they were last year and maybe you know get a three-peat or maybe just uh, a couple more NWAC championships. So I'm really excited and I'm glad to be here. So thank you. Yeah, don't tell the president of the NWAC where that saran wrap is. So you might want to use it on me. Al Williams, Athletics Director, come on up, Al. Thank you, Dick. I don't know that Dick officially introduced himself. Dick is the voice of the Cardinals. He's been with us for at least 15 years, does a great job doing our webcast for all of our indoor sports of basketball, volleyball, and wrestling. I want to congratulate Dick for another great year for us. Thank you, Dick Haugen. I also want to give a shout out to our IT department. These young men back here in the back were the ones that provided the outstanding telecast we have for softball. If you were able to watch the games, it was ESPN quality. Did you say young men? Well, <laughs> one was young, the other one just looks young. Bob Gibson and Steve Smith back there from our IT department from North Idaho College. <laughs> this year, we had a new addition to our webcast. We're going to be doing the webcast of our home games for soccer this year. We bought a brand new scoreboard, not scoreboard, um, video equipment from our um, booster club. So we're gonna have a chance to put our home soccer matches on webcast. The links are already set up. It'll be the first time we've had our soccer matches be um, webcast for all of our home matches. So now all of our home teams will be telecast via uh, internet. We hear that's one of the biggest recruiting coops for our family members that are away from home, be able to watch all of our home teams. So it's going Get a chance to come out there to the field, quarter mat, log in to our website and catch all of our home matches and all the road matches for basketball as well, too. Uh, if you didn't notice, there's a theme to all of the um, successful our programs. A lot of it has to do with the longevity of our coaches, as you probably heard. Um, most of them have been there for quite a few years. I didn't realize um, Coach Wickham had been there for 23 years. Don Don Williams started our softball programs 22 years ago. Dan Hogan's been here for 19 years. Corey's been here for 15 years. Ken Thompson's been here for 12 years. Um, Coach Carlson's been here for 15 years. This is my 16th year. Russ Grove is our baby of the group. He's been here for five years. Kelsey Stanley's been here for five as a head coach, eight overall. I guess they like coming back here and being around North Idaho College, but it's amazing that the continuity we've had, we see so many coaches coming back as assistant coaches when you have a good thing going on, people want to come back. They talked about going to the NWAC and not getting um, players coming from out of the area. We're still getting athletes coming from. Uh, we had our best athlete last year on the golf team was from Australia. Another one came from the UK. We have a player from New York coming in here. We got Alabama coming in here for wrestling. We're getting Minnesota coming in here for basketball. It's amazing the athletes still want to come here. They come here for the quality of our programs, the quality of our coaching staffs. The success that we've had has been unsurpassed in the NWAC. So it's nice to have that continuity in our program. So you read in here that we are still nationally recognized. That's not an overstatement. It's a tremendous history, tremendous tradition. The Booster Club support, the attendance we have out here just represents what we do as a program. We try to do things on the highest level. I want to thank Roger Stewart for getting this out. We just gave him this program yesterday. And this is our fall guy, but he got this out to us in one day to get this back to us. But um, it's just fun to see the success we have as a program. It may have been mentioned earlier, but we've had individual accolades. We have the Coach of the Year for three of our programs with um, men's basketball, golf, and softball. Not only was the NWAC Coach of the Year, they were the All-American Coaching Staff for the Year for the National Fast Pitch Coaching Association. So that's amazing. We also have individual players of the year. They decided not to leave, but to come back. You have Raekwon, who was a player of the year for basketball. We have um, uh, Kayla Newman, who was a player of the year for volleyball. We had individual medalists for both men and women's golf. Then we have Maddie Mott, who was 29 and one, which is outstanding. Could have gone division one when she left here with a 29 and one record, but you forget she's also a 4.0 student and decided to come back here for her sophomore year so she could complete her degree here and hopefully go into a nursing program. So people want to stay around to give her a kudo, give everybody a kudo for those kind of accomplishments. 
This is just the start of the year. We've already been in school for three weeks. Other NWAC schools have not even started class yet, so we're already behind. When they're talking about going off and having their um, volleyball tournament and soccer matches, we've been three weeks in the school, and they, and they have not even thought about picking up a book yet. So it's hard to get things turned around, but we're already off to a slow start, but it's going to get better once we're on the same level as they are as far as having to worry about classes, too. I want to follow up on one of the comments that um, Corey made as far as the lessons you get from Russell Grove. Russell and I also played golf a few months ago, and um, Russell told me also to bring your clubs out there to the driving range. And then he said, just leave them there. <laughs> it doesn't get any better, Russ, but thanks for at least thinking about me. I want to thank all you all for coming out here. We have events coming up next week, like they mentioned. If you haven't had a cruise ticket, uh, make sure you pick one up today. That's next Tuesday, next Wednesday, the 12th. Um, Coeur d'Alene Resort does a nice job of sponsoring that for us. Our double boat float, it's a nice chance to get out there. It's our friend raiser, not a fundraiser, a friend raiser. Come out there and just enjoy the sunset cruise, double boat float, meet the coaches, the booster members, people on our um, um, booster club board. Come out there and thank you all for coming out there. But then we also have the Royal Williams Golf Tournament. Again, pick up your flyer. But if you haven't joined the booster club, please come out and join that. It's one of the best deals in town. We feed you at all the home matches of our basketball games, and that starts in 17th when we have our ring ceremony, hopefully if the rings are here for basketball. But it's just nice to have all the success in returning the athletes for this upcoming season. So we do have some raffle prize lists. Grab your raffle tickets before we send you guys home with a nice sunset cruise drive home. Pull out your red tickets. Got a few items here. Um, in the spirit of golf, we're going to start off with the Titleist golf hat for those golfers. The first number, 546287. 287. Oh, I got it. You got it? No. Okay. If the word got out we were going to be doing our homecoming, that had to be rescheduled because our sponsor, Coraline Casino, couldn't get their shirts to us this year. But we do have some of their shirts from last year, so we're going to raffle a few of those off for you. So we're going to reschedule that homecoming to potentially October 23rd. Going to work at ASNIC to get a little more publicity on that. That's a triple header with two soccer matches versus Spokane, 24th. And then we play Big Ben in a nightcap. So it's a triple header with Spokane, our tribal, and then Big Ben. Should be a good whooping. Um, NIC t shirt, 546339. Last three numbers, 339. Mr. Baker gets back in the cart. There we go. Barry, you need a new shirt. That's the proud father of Karina Baker. Barry Baker never missed a home game when Karina was playing for us. Soccer. NIC soccer. That's, that's one from the archives, but don't show them in the back. That was when they were 2007 swag. It's an antique there shirt. There we go. Old school. <laughs> retro. It's a retro shirt. 546-315. 315. Watch somebody from the soccer program get it. There we go. He wants that for soccer. <laughs> Memorial Field. There's another legendary tradition and excellence. Softball. That's a classic. That was from Don Don's first year. <laughs> Five, four, six, three, two, seven. Three, two, seven. That was Memorial Field when it was still fashionable. NIC t-shirt. Long sleeve. 546330. There we go. Our good friends again at Coeur d'Alene Casino. These are dual shirts. His and her shirts. Mostly his. 322. 546322. 322. Last three numbers. 322. There we go. Lasha, you always need some shirts. And I see golf shirt. And I see golf shirt. 
546-299. NIC golf shirt, 299. There we go. Here's a golfer. Golfer in the making. Made by Russell Athletics. <laughs> Not Russell Gross, Dad. A couple more Coraline Casino shirts. Two nine seven. Last three numbers. Two nine seven. Two nine seven. There we go. There's that vest that TJ's always wanted. He's always wanted a vest. Two XL. What's your number, TJ? Kelsey, if you need him, this one. Three, two, four. Three, two, four. Coach G, he's got a vest. <laughs> and one more round of Coeur d'Alene t shirts, Coeur d'Alene Casino t shirts. Three, two, nine. Three, two, nine. There we go. Congratulations. Sam Wright. Sam Hate. That's good. Okay, now if you haven't got your cruise tickets, please make sure you pick some of these up on the way out. This is free for our boosters as a thank you for coming out this evening. Talk about a great evening here on the Spokane River here in Coeur d'Alene. Again, thanks for um, Mr. Kemp for hosting us tonight. If by chance you were supposed to pay and didn't pay, stop by on your way out. It's a great evening, great fundraiser. Thank you all for coming out. See you at upcoming events. And thanks for our Booster Club board for all your support. Have a great evening. Have a great year. Go Cards.